This is the Morning Swim Show for Thursday, September 1st, 2011. I'm your host, Peter Bush. In the Finice Monitor today, we'll talk to Paul Stafford. He's the head coach at the Terrapin Swim Team, which, among many other things, was Natalie Coughlin's club team growing up. They have some more young stars on the rise now. And Coach Stafford joins us right now in the Finice Monitor from Concord, California. Coach, welcome to the Morning Swim Show. How are you? Pretty good. Thank you for having me. Pleasure to have you. I mentioned some young stars that you have. Chelsea Cheneau is at the top of that list for sure. Yes, she is. She yeah. had, a, had another good year. Had tell, a good couple years. Tell us about Chelsea because she is, she's approaching that Olympic level for sure. Uh, yeah, she, she's getting there, and that's uh, certainly her goal. Um, boy, Chelsea, she's a, she's a fierce competitor, um, uh, has all the physical tools to I guess go as far as she would like in this sport. So uh, we're looking forward to this next year. Uh, take care of some of the things that maybe we didn't take care of last year, and uh, and move forward. Now she's in high school, and in California, the high school season is late spring. Not ideal timing when you're trying to make the Olympic team with trials in the early summer. So what's she going to do? Uh, our, well, our focus, we have somewhat of a unique situation in that uh, at our facility we can train short courts and long courts year round. Uh, so her training is definitely going to be uh, going to have a long course focus uh, throughout the year. Um, that will definitely be her emphasis through the high school season. Um, uh, we have had a good relationship with the high school coaches in the area. And uh, as long as I keep them informed of what the plans are and kind of uh, involve them in um, kind of her training plan for the year. I, I think we'll be able to participate in high school swimming, uh, but in a sense de-emphasize that uh, leading into, into the summer season. So train mostly with you. Maybe she swims the meets. Maybe she even swims the high school championships, but likely not shaved or tapered. Oh, exactly. Exactly. And she'll, they're, they're, they don't have a problem with the, with the kids training 100% with us as long as we allow them to be part of the team, you know, for certain events and functions and, and, and like you said, the meets. Yeah, they'll, they'll take the points at the dual meets? Uh, yeah, uh, yes, exactly. <laughs> All right, another guy who we probably won't see on the team next year, but maybe in four or eight years, this Justin Lynch guy. He's only 14, already going sub-55 in the 100-fly long course. Uh, yeah, he's, he's one that has come up through our age group program, kind of been quietly developing over the last several years uh, under our head issue coach, Doug Reed, and uh, kind of had a breakthrough season uh, this, this last year and, and uh, kind of took his swimming to a new level. So the timing is, is right, and he's still a young guy, still in a, a developmental training mode. Um, uh, but yeah, if we do things right, we think he's uh, going to continue to get better. Now, we caution to compare people to Michael Phelps. We don't want to put too much pressure on a 14-year-old kid. But he did just break that you know, Phelps' old high, or 13 to 14 age group record in that uh, hunter fly. What's, uh, what's he like you know, physically? Uh, he's actually he's, he's going to be a big kid. Uh, I, think, I think he's, uh, he's kind of in that, uh, that growth stage right now. Uh, we're slowly adding things to his training program. We will add a... Um, a little bit of a strength component, but we will continue to maintain uh, kind of a base training uh, focus over this next year. We don't want to we don't want to specialize too early with with him. Uh, and I, Justin realizes that, and I think he realizes that this is a is just a step in his development. So we're not putting a whole lot of emphasis on uh, the record per se. What would you say your coaching philosophy is? Uh, Boy, uh, you know, we're, we, our program uh, design or our program model was developed many years ago by then head coach Ray Mitchell. Um, we recognize that, that we coach girls and boys, not men and women. 
Uh, so we really take a uh, developmental approach to our to our young kids. We make sure that we're um, that we're providing a, a foundation so that when they're uh, that they're swimming fast when they should and later in their high school years and in their collegiate years. Uh, so my, my philosophy is one of a, a taking a developmental approach um, and making sure that we're doing things right at the younger levels. We're not training our young kids as collegiate athletes. Does that so. mean, you know, you don't do as much yardage or as much intensity? I'm still a little unclear what that okay. means. Uh, yeah, I, I think uh, the, we certainly like to do as much yardage as we can. Um, uh, you know, I, with our top kids, we're, you know, trying to get in 60,000 plus uh, a week, uh, hopefully more than that with some of them. Um, so it's not so much a yardage parameter as it is uh, the type of training that we're doing. Um, at the young ages, we're looking at more sub-maximal effort levels, more of an aerobic base. Uh, and then as they progress and as they go through those sensitive periods of, of growth and maturation, we'll, we'll start adding to their program. We'll add a strength component, we'll add more quality sprint work, but that's not really our emphasis at the young ages. It's great to have fast 10 and unders and 11 and 12s, but uh, you know, we, not at the expense of, of just the long-term focus uh, or foundation aspect of, of what we feel the kids need to do at that stage. I know coaching mentalities have changed over the past decade or so. How about a swimmer's mentality? When you're talking about a teenage kid, do they respond differently to what you're trying to get them to do now than maybe 15 years ago? Um, you know, there. I, I think there is a difference. Um, it, it was not as it was not as difficult uh, to get kids to really uh, to really work hard many, many years ago, and I think right now to get the kids to embrace uh, that aspect of it, um, the work ethic aspect of it, just takes a little bit more um, education. You have to explain to them why you're doing things and not just, hey, we're going, we're going 10 400s just because we said so, but, you know, we have to educate them on the process a little bit, and parents as well. Tell me about the history of the Terrapins. You started, uh, right? Pardon me? You started the club, right? I was part of the, uh, the founding fathers. Uh, the team was uh, a result of a merger between a, uh, a club with a lot of history, Concord Pleasant Hill Swim Club. Um, at the time, my, my current national group assistant, Rick Waterhouse, was with that club. And uh, Ray Mitchell uh, was our head coach at the time. He is now our team director. Um, and so it, it, the club is a result of a merger between Concord Pleasant Hill and our club, which was the Lombarinda Aquatic Club. And we've been in, the Terrapins have been in existence for, I think it's 23 years now. So yes, I was around uh, day one, learning from the best of them. Well, good to see you're still cranking out fast swimmers, Paul. We're trying hard. Well, thank you very much for joining us and good luck throughout this next year. Hey, thank you for having me and uh, we'll see you soon. All right, that's Paul Stafford joining us in the Phoenix Monitor from Concord, California. That's it for today's show. I'm Peter Bush reminding you to keep your head down at the finish.